Welcome back to Piggy Board Gamer, this is Hector Rakos and today I will explain the game Tiny Towns which is a quite popular game published by AEG and designed by Peter McPherson. Up to six players can play this game which is quite good, also can be played as a solo and takes about an hour to finish. In the game players are trying to create specific combinations of resources in order to construct their buildings. Enough for now, let's move to the table and see how the game is played. In the game, players are trying to build their tiny towns by constructing buildings with the most efficient way. On every round, the master builder calls for a specific resource that all players are required to add to their town. By creating patterns of specific resources, players are constructing buildings. Buildings have specific powers or scoring effects. At the end of the game, the player who has created the most prestigious town and gains the most victory points will win in tiny towns. At first, give each player a player board and then select a player at random to be the starting player who takes the Master Builder token. The cards of the game are split to two main types. We have seven different colors of building cards and purple monument cards. Separate the cards and shuffle each stack. Then create a face-up display of building cards using one random card of each building type. Then deal each player two monument cards. Players select one of them and they return the second back to the stack. Players keep their selected monument secret from other players. Then players take one of the monument tokens which they place on top of their monument card which is gonna be used when and if they build their monument. These are the only cards that will be used in the game, the rest of the cards are returned back to the box. Create a supply with resource cubes and building tokens next to the board. This is a setup for a two-player game, there are no differences with other player counts and the game is now ready to start. Before starting with gameplay, I would like to explain the information depicted on building and monument cards. Let's see this cottage card for example. In the top right corner, cards depict the type of building token that will be used once the building is constructed on the player's board. In the middle of the card, we see a pattern of resources that the player must try to match on their city using resources in order to construct the building. In the bottom of the card, we see a text describing an effect that will be applied once the building is constructed. Most of the effects are self-explanatory. However, there are some building and monument clarifications on page 7 and 8 of the rulebook. This card, for example, says that you gain 3 victory points, and yes, that's the symbol of victory points in the game, if this building is fed. So this building must be fed during the game, and this is also indicated by this symbol on the top of the card. Some other cards, like this greenhouse here, provide food for cards that require it. The greenhouse here does not produce any victory points, however it feeds one contagious group of buildings requiring food anywhere in your town. The game is played in rounds and this continues until all players have completed their towns. On each one of the rounds, the master builder calls for one resource type. Then all players must take a cube of the called resource and then place it to an empty square in their town. In the next step, all players may construct one or more buildings if they have matched their corresponding patterns. As a last step, the Master Builder token is passed to the player to the left, who starts the next round. Let's see the round steps in a greater detail. There's not a lot to explain for the first step. The player who holds the Master Builder token selects any one resource type that all players will have to use in the current round. Resources are unlimited, so any resource type can be called. After all players have taken a cube of the called resource from the supply, they must add it into an empty square in their town. By empty, we mean a square that has no other resource and no other building. Placement does not have to be adjacent to anything, so I could place the cube here, for example. If anything in the game calls for adjacency, Adjacency can only be traced orthogonally and never diagonally, so these two resources are not adjacent, for example. In the next step, all players simultaneously may construct buildings if they have placed resources in their town that match to a pattern of any building card or their monument card. A pattern matches even if it's rotated, mirrored or even mirrored and rotated together. 
A player must then remove all cubes used in the pattern, placing them back to the general supply, and then add a building token of the corresponding type to any square where the pattern existed. If the card describes an effect that takes place immediately after constructing the building or monument, then carry out the effect. Players may choose not to construct a building even if they match the pattern, and they can also construct multiple buildings in the same turn. However, make sure that each resource cube is used for only one building. General buildings may be constructed by all players, and having multiple copies of a building is absolutely normal. However, players may only construct their own monument and only one copy of it. After all players are done constructing buildings, the Master Builder token is passed to the next player clockwisely. That player is now the Master Builder who will call a new or the same resource for the new round. Whenever a player's board has no empty spaces and that player cannot or does not wish to construct any more buildings, that player is out of the game. That player simply waits until all players complete their towns as well, at which point the game ends and proceeds to scoring. When there is only one player remaining, that player becomes the master builder for all remaining rounds and plays alone until their town is complete as well. In scoring, players first remove all of their unused resources from their town, leaving empty squares. Players then will score victory points for all their constructed buildings and monuments, and they will lose two victory points for each empty square in their town. Let's use this town as an example. The player has constructed four cottages granting three victory points each if they are fed. Each greenhouse feeds one group of cottages. The player has built one greenhouse and will choose this group of three cottages to feed. So the player gains three victory points for each one of these three cottages and zero points for this one. Greenhouses never score victory points for themselves. The player has also constructed three taverns and according to this table the player scores nine victory points for all of their taverns. Next the player has constructed two sheds granting one point each. Each theatre scores one victory point for each unique building constructed in the row or column of the constructed theatre. Here we have five different buildings, so this theatre scores five points. Each abbey scores three victory points if it's not adjacent to any factory, tavern or theatre. Unfortunately, this abbey is adjacent to a tavern, so only this abbey is scored. Finally, the player's monument scores one victory point for each unique building type placed on the board. The player has constructed six unique buildings and scores six victory points. The player also loses four victory points for these two empty squares and tallies up the score. The player with the most victory points is the winner of the game. If there is a tie, the player who had the least turns being a master builder wins the game. If the tie still exists, then the player who constructed the most cottages wins. After that, all tight players share their victory. In the solo mode, before choosing the cards to play, you must exclude these specific four cards. These cannot be used in a solo game. Game is almost the same. In addition to the rest of the setup, you're gonna use these resource cards. You shuffle it and you create a face-down stack. Then from the top of this stack, you reveal the top three cards. This deck plays the role of the Master Builder. Each card depicts one of the five different resources. On every round, the player must choose one of the face-up cards and take the corresponding resource. Then, the selected card is flipped facing downwards and placed in the bottom of the stack and then a new card is revealed. The player then continues the current round by placing the resource, constructing buildings, and so on and so forth. At the end of the game, the player's final score is evaluated by a table on page 6 of the rulebook. And that's how you can play Tiny Towns, a quite awesome game by AEG. If you like our videos and want to see more, please subscribe to our channel. Until next time, have fun and play more board games.